And Alfie, I want to start with you if I can, because you tend to me that 2016 is going to be better than 2015. And I wonder if you can tell folks why you're saying that. Uh, I'm 100% convinced that we are on an uptick and we're continuing and the uptick is going to continue when it comes to startups. And I think that uh, we've seen it, or most of you who are following the news, that the foreign investors, the non-local investors are finally starting to recognize the talent and the startups here. But more importantly is the local investors are starting to recognize it. And I think that 2016 will be the largest investment in startups ever in the Middle East. And I think it's, it has been a lack of funding more than a lack of talent. You guys are the talent. You've been here. You've been struggling. We, the people who are supposed to deliver the money, have not had enough and have not been backed up by enough people to really help you achieve what you can do. So you've been talking about the why this is, though. I mean, you're talking there are better companies. There's more of them. Talk a little bit about the kind of quantity as well as the quality of what you're seeing right now. Uh, quantity has never been an answer. It's always been the quality. And the quality of companies has been getting better. And the quality of the environment has been getting better. Four years, at least in Egypt and in several other places, four years of up and down tends to distract founders and entrepreneurs, especially younger founders and entrepreneurs. The companies that have succeeded in the last four years or have done relatively better have been the ones with older entrepreneurs who focused more on their business then be distracted by what's going on around them. And I think what's, uh, that there is a beginning of a migration and we're seeing people who were corporate, people 30, 40 years old, look at joining a startup as a real viable opportunity and we're seeing some of them start to migrate out of the corporate world later in their career, not just at age 20, 25, leave and join a corporate, and join a startup, leave the corporate, and really help it, and the experience is invaluable. Uh, the, the profile of startups, uh, somebody who did, does one of the surveys, the profiles of startups are the most successful ones, the high growth ones, are ones where the founders have had some experience living in a different country, either in the Middle East or abroad, and they've had uh, five years of corporate experience and left the corporate world. Always making an entrance. Hey, Alfie, last one for you, buddies. Okay. You're uh, putting your money where your mouth is. Can you talk about expansion in 2016 with Flat6 Labs? So, uh, Flat6 Labs is now in Cairo, Jeddah, and Abu Dhabi. And we're expanding to three new markets that are, will happen probably in the first quarter. Those are Tunis, uh, Beirut, and Bahrain. And we're looking at opening a second accelerator at all three markets that we're already in, in Egypt, uh, Saudi, and in the UAE. So, I mean, that's as much an indication of what 2016 is going to be looking at as almost anything I've heard. It's exciting stuff. Hala, you just got off a plane from Lebanon, where you've been both based and, and have been doing great investments overall. Just like there are 4,000 people here today, there were, what, 5,000 people in Lebanon yesterday? Before I get into you a little bit, just quickly, what did you see in Lebanon the last day or two? Good morning. Uh, yeah, so Lebanon, I mean, the ecosystem is happening. There were 5,000 people at uh, BDL Accelerate. I have to say, though, that nothing beats the energy I see here. And <laughs> a round of applause to um, Aboud and Gehad doing this three years in a row and it's uh, more and more amazing year after year here it's very grassroots thank you for having me again so bdl accelerate had um, great energy 5000 people 7000 registered lots of people coming from uh, every corner of the world from asia to silicon valley to uh, Europe all converging into Lebanon and this is really new for Lebanon and I think it means a lot for the entrepreneurs in in Lebanon um, and Lebanon is a small country so it's not Egypt it's just four million people you can add to that one and a half million refugees these days so that's five and a half million people and um, uh, well we'll see the results of that ecosystem building five years from now because uh, as you may know the, 
there has been about 400 million of capital injected into venture capital in Lebanon. So if private sector takes over this um, government initiative five years from now, then we would have succeeded. I'm going to bring David in a minute to talk a little bit about how investors think about investors. But I want you, Hala, to talk a little bit about how investors think about the entrepreneurs. I want to read a quick quote from Ben Horowitz's favorite, famous book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things, which, by the way, I think is coming out in Arabic uh, this year, which would be fantastic. But Ben wrote, the hard thing isn't setting a big, hairy, audacious goal. The hard thing is laying people off when you miss the big goal. The hard thing isn't hiring great people. The hard thing is when those great people develop a sense of entitlement and start demanding unreasonable things. The hard thing isn't setting up an organizational chart. The hard thing is getting people to communicate within the organization that was just designed. The hard thing isn't dreaming big. The hard thing is waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat when the dream turns into a nightmare. Hala, you and I have talked about this a lot. This game is not about something cool. This isn't about partnerships for the sake of marketing and visibility. Talk about what you think about when you think about great entrepreneurs you're about to back. So I don't know how people are really listening to what we're saying because I don't know the sound system. And I, so one way I, I thought of, uh, you know, just getting you all engaged is one thing I've noticed when I walk around and I ask an entrepreneur I've known for many years, how are you? How are you doing? They're always doing great. And I'm really surprised because it's really tough to start a company. So when you see me and I ask you, how are you doing? Please tell me what's your problem. You should have many, many problems if you're really working hard. And uh, it's no longer about being cool and being an entrepreneur. It's really about building a real business. I mean, we're competing globally here. We're competing with people who have millions in revenues. You're competing with your neighbor also on hiring the next talent that might be, by the way, sitting next to you right now. So I, I just want to make sure entrepreneurs in the region get their priorities right. You should be obsessed by recruiting AAA people. You should be obsessed by revenue growth. You should be obsessed by accelerating your business and growing super, super fast. Because the window of opportunity today is just a few months. So what's your problem? Next time I see you, I don't want to be hearing, oh, it's great, we've just done this and that. I mean, that's great, you need energy. But I'd like to be able to share your problems, and I hope you have many, many problems, because that's a signal of ha fast growth, of, of um, executing and delivering on a business. That's um, normal life, having lots of problems that you're facing as entrepreneurs. Dave, uh, you, you have made a global bet. There's no question you're putting your money where your mouth is now. And you're not only betting big on places like Turkey and like South America and Southeast Asia and, of course, the United States. You're beating huge here in the Middle East. Before I ask you a little bit about the investor perspective, you've been now going all over the world the last year. You've been across the Middle East the last week and a half or so. Can you just give a quick update about what you're seeing and some parallels that you're seeing globally, but specifically What's impressing you about Middle East so far? Um, sure. So we, uh, we've been doing a Geeks on a Plane trip for about five or six years. Actually, there's some folks in the audience. If you're a Geeks on a Plane, yell out. If you're other geeks in Egypt, give me a hail. Yay! Uh, so we've visited, um, I guess, probably over 30 or 40 countries in the last five or six years. We've done about 16 or 17 of these trips. Uh, each year we see a lot more entrepreneurship, we see a lot more capital coming into emerging markets, uh, and it's really encouraging. Um, in particular, I think we've seen Southeast Asia and India really develop uh, pretty considerably in the last three years. Uh, both of those um, ecosystems are really going gangbusters. Um, I think we're seeing funds being raised in the region, so here in the Middle East, I think MEVP and WAMDA both kind of raising funds recently. We just announced a fund that we're getting started. Um, Hala doing more investments in Lebanon. So I, I think there's a lot of criticism of emerging markets not really being there yet. And I think that's exactly incorrect. I think we're just seeing a lot of 
a lot of capital and a lot of entrepreneurship happening all over the place. And even seeing, you know, unicorns or unicorns to be like Souk here, um, probably seven or eight companies in the middle, uh, in India. So those things were not the case three years ago, four years ago. Um, so I think there's really measurable progress that's going on in a very short period of time. You've seen in these markets around the world, and you've commented on it with me to the Middle East in particular, investors are the weak link, not the founders. What do you, <laughs> what do you mean when you say that? Um, well, I think there's always more for entrepreneurs to learn and figure out, but the access to information for entrepreneurs is, is pretty readily available. There's websites, blogs, podcasts, videos, uh, Ben's book. There's lots of information about entrepreneurship that's available. Um, there's not always that much information about investing in venture capital or angel investors that's available. Um, and typically, I think that's where you know, most of the ecosystem is being held back is access to capital, particularly at uh, seed stage, to between accelerator and series A, where it's very high risk. Um, the companies aren't necessarily profitable at that stage, even if they're growing. Uh, and there's just not that many people who are writing those kinds of checks. Why do you think that is, in your experience? And very importantly, it's all well and good to say the investors are the problem, but these guys have to deal with the investors, <laughs> right? They're the ones who are getting term sheet abuse. Well, they They're the have... ones who have to give up 50% of their company for very little yeah. money. So what, what can they do about it? Uh, well, they can run cash flow profitable businesses and ignore us. I think that, you know, even though you guys come here to listen to investors, you don't always need investors to run your businesses. I know it'd be nice if you had money from investors, but sometimes you can make money just by selling a product and you know, establishing savings and running those businesses out of cash flow. Uh, I think definitely you have to run businesses more with a revenue-centric mindset, less growth-centric mindset. Um, I think you need to be able to get money from friends and family and from customers, and pretty much you need to do everything you possibly can. Um, I know Amir at Wazaf started uh, started the business in the middle of a revolution, and I'm pretty sure he didn't have as much access to capital as he wanted, uh, but he's running a profitable business and just raised a Series A earlier this summer, and uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any entrepreneur in Silicon Valley that works harder than he does or his team does here in Egypt. How are you going to say? Yeah, I was going to agree with him that investors are the problem. <clears throat> we see, we see actually... Not, not any of us, just the other ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly, the other ones. Uh, just because I see so many investors setting the wrong priorities for entrepreneurs. So you really need to fight for, for uh, what you really want. If, if you're obsessed by revenue growth and uh, you find an investor that will just invest in you to survive as opposed to grow and that doesn't understand that to be able to grow you need to go through um, maybe a, a dip in profits and not seek for profitability right away. I don't want to be preaching, you know, for some bad habits, but you're, you need to think long term. And I've seen a lot of investors also not necessarily appreciating employee stock option plans and the dilution that comes from that, whereas this is really key for um, recruiting. Um, and I've seen horrible term sheets as well that demotivate investors. You know, I, I, I'm listening to, to Dave and Hala on this, Alfie, it sounds great. But I got to tell you, being an entrepreneur myself, if someone turns to me and said, well, get, you know, get profitable faster or get more than one term sheet, that sounds great. But at the end of the day, it feels like the investors really are a challenge here. And I'm wondering how you think about that and what advice you have for folks here. Uh, building an ecosystem is just uh, going to something that's self-perpetuating. And there's a different way. We're missing some components. Definitely, definitely, investors are the problem, not because we investors are doing something wrong, there's just not enough of us, right? There, we need more money, we need more investors. We're the only business that loves competition, okay? I mean, both of these guys compete with me on some level or another, and I'm really happy that they're here. I'm why, really why are you happy? Because they help develop the ecosystem. We need more investors, we need more competition, we need more VCs, more accelerators, okay? Because we definitely, definitely, to make the wheel spin, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, they need more experience, but we need lots of money, right? And uh, again, the thing is we need to build the local ecosystem. Ecosystems here are different than ecosystems there. It's kind of like, you know, the, the Amazon and the coral reef. Two different ecosystems, completely different. But the concept is they self-perpetuate. This one needs to be self-perpetuating and we need to fill all the gaps. 
Dave, if you could talk a little bit to these guys, you've met a lot of them, you've invested in a few of them. You know, I think you think business plans are kind of bullshit. I mean, what, what are you looking for? When you sit down with one of these young people and, the, and within seconds, if not minutes, you say, we've got something here which is interesting, what are you actually seeing? Um, I think it, at its most basic, we're looking for a functional product and we're looking for customer usage. Uh, hopefully we're looking for you know, some level of revenue uh, and we're looking for growth. Um, and I think you know, one thing that I will say is a lot of people come up to me and ask me, well, what do you think of my idea or what do you think of my business? And I, I, you know, I'll give them my opinion, but actually I don't really want you asking me what I think of your business. I want you to tell me what you think of your business, tell me what your customers think of your business. Uh, I don't care so much about the idea, I care so much, a lot more about the execution. So we invest very early, but we want to see, you know, products that people use and that solve a real problem. And most of the time we can tell if they're solving a problem because people pay for things. It's really quite, the, quite that basic in a Just quick, and I'll, I'll ask this to you in a second, Alfie. Just, you can name the name or not name the name, but what's the best pitch you've seen in the last few weeks? What would be an example that really took you? Uh, well, I, I guess I, it wasn't a perfect pitch, but we saw a pitch a few nights ago from an entrepreneur who came out of Gaza who came to Jordan. And, uh, you know, here's a guy who basically had trouble getting across the border, was developing a business in a really tough place, uh, was pitching in another language, um, really was impressed with, you know, his ability to, you know, hustle under tough circumstances and really show me uh, a fun opportunity to take a look at. Alfie? I just want to add one concept, and that's uh, a challenge to all of you guys. Too many people want to be entrepreneurs and don't want to pay the price and don't want to work hard enough. And so I think the thing that I would add to Dave's list is a work ethic. I want to see somebody who works harder than I do. I want to see somebody who works his ass off every day, seven days a week, okay? And I, I don't remember who said it, but you know, if, if I see an entrepreneur at a spot where I'm having a casual dinner or I'm at the beach, that's not an investment. Totally agree, like work like a slave, that's uh, famous. Uh, and on the great pitch, I, th I, I just had one yesterday from someone here, uh, for Agilius from Cash Basha. So if you're here, I loved your pitch. And why, but tell them why. And be very specific, why? Um, he, he knows what he's talking about. He's motivated. Uh, he understands the business, the technology. Uh, he has a team. Um, he, he could have thought a bit bigger about his idea. He, uh, we, we still have this in the region that people tend to think too small from the start as opposed to thinking big and uh, having a vision for that, for that product. Alfie, how do you think about thinking small and thinking big? I've seen in Flat6 Labs amazing companies that are proud to be Egyptian companies hitting Egypt, and I see companies that are thinking regional right off the bat, and they're ones thinking globally. How do you think about the Egyptian ecosystem and more broadly, how you assess the thinking big and the thinking you know, to revenue and profitability fast or challenge? Uh, we don't have the luxury to really play with those too much starting in an ecosystem that doesn't have enough funding. All right? And if we had enough funding, everybody here I think would think bigger. People can't dream very big when they know that there's a massive gap in getting there. And that massive gap is the support that's going to get them over that hurdle. So, yeah, maybe there's enough funding to go attack the Egyptian market. And if he's really lucky, we'll get enough funding to attack the regional market. Very few people here think, nobody here, nobody, thinks they can raise $25 million, okay, on a Series B to go attack the, you know, the U.S. market or Europe. So that's just not realistic. However, many of those companies would succeed if they had that money. Okay, they're as good as companies anywhere that get that kind of funding. We just don't have those valuations here. Dave, thinking big and thinking small in an emerging market? You know, I, I'm not too worried about that. I really think that, you know, again, whether you're thinking big or small, you're talking about the future. And I kind of want to just see you execute today and next week and the week after that. And so if the business is growing, you know, we're willing to be patient and see if it becomes you know, a $1 million business, a $5 million business, a $20 million business, like that's gonna take time and execution to get there. Um, I agree with, with Hala that people should be thinking about the possibility of the future being, you know, a regional business, a global business, but, you know, today, right now, Egypt is a big market in itself, you know, 
80, 90 million people is definitely a large enough market to go after. The larger Arabic speaking market is a couple of hundred million. So, you know, I'm not too worried about people just focusing on what's right in front of them and just continuing to grow the business. So you guys have talked about the rise of angel financing, a little bit of A round, and the three of you are in this game in big time. And, but the fact is you also have to think about your companies in the next round. And there still seems to be a fair amount of absence of growth capital. Now you've got Fadi Gondor and Wamda Capital and a few now that are raising significant money. But as investors, looking at an early stage company, having to think about its ability to really grow with future capital, how much do you consider that when you invest in a company? Well, uh, we invest in Series B, so a bit later stage um, than the guys sitting here. So five to $10 million tickets. And from the minute we invest, we start thinking to, about the next round. And we start working with the entrepreneur about the next round because most likely within a year, this company will need probably more money. So this is also the kind of partnership that we would like to build with entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, as they said, and as you said, it's very difficult to find these larger tickets from the region. So most likely the 20, 30, 50 million dollar ticket that will follow will come from investors globally. And on the point of grow big or small and fast or slow, I opt for fast and big because in financing and in growth and in technology, there's a window of opportunity. And the window of opportunity today in financing is green light almost everywhere. And this happens very rarely. So as a result of that, we should be growing very fast, trying to grab that opportunity. We have the chance to have people who listen today about an entrepreneur coming with a tech idea and that is from the Middle East. They're starting to listen. I think that's an incredible opportunity. So we should go grab that opportunity as fast as we can. Dave, before I give Valfi the last question, are you going to bring some growth? Do you think growth capital will follow from outside of the region? Or how do you think about what's going to happen to your great companies once they succeed but need that more capital? Um, I, you know, I think there's definitely challenges in Series A, Series B, and later. Um, I think for companies that are you know, demonstrating growth opportunities. There's investors that are coming, you know, from Europe and from other markets that are maybe willing to start investing in the Middle East. Uh, but again, it's, it's still gonna be a bit of a challenge until we have more demonstrated success stories. Um, I would say a lot of times, you know, we at 500 are, are investing pretty early. We don't necessarily have the luxury of knowing which companies are gonna end up being big or growing fast. So we have to invest in a lot and hopefully a few of them ended up growing big and fast. Um, one thing that we've been investing a lot of our time in is building out uh, customer acquisition resources on our team. So about 15 people out of our overall team are doing nothing but you know customer acquisition, consulting and training and education. Uh, we spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs trying to help them with that topic and uh, we think that's really important for them to be able to scale up growth. Awesome, I'm gonna let you wrap, Alfie. You gave a speech the other day of 10 of the most important lessons that you think entrepreneurs should be thinking about. We're not have time for that here, but I wonder if there were top maybe one, two, or three that you'd love to live with this crowd, what would those have been? Um, let's just leave it with the top one. Share, share everything. Share knowledge if you're acting as an entrepreneur. Share the information that you have with your peers. Sharing is the thing that has not been a big part of the culture in the Arab world in business, okay? Everybody has had this concept that subliminally the pie is finite and what you get is what I lose. It's not that way. If you share, it builds for everybody. So thank you. We're happy to share the campus with you. We're happy that you share information with each other and that you're sharing these wonderful two days with us. Look, I can't agree with that more, Alfie. It's the most powerful point. I've said to people, there are no assholes in an ecosystem. We're all in this together. We have to help each other build and that kind of a thing. And it's a great message to end. But I'll end with one more thing. There are two books available here which are phenomenal to think about the things that you've been hearing about. If you want the global perspective, Elmira has just written this amazing new book called From the Other Side of the World, which literally is a tour of every emerging market and what's happening there, brilliantly rendered. But my favorite new book of all time is about entrepreneurship in Egypt, written by some of you folks here right now, which you can get everywhere. I'm in Saeed, Manez El Asar, and Mohamed Wasfi. It is a fantastic read, and I recommend that to you guys as well. Great to be with you. Thank you.